in this video, we're going to be focusing on stereolithography, which we have here, and selective laser sintering, which we have here. And at the end of the video, we're going to talk a little bit about metal 3D printing with DLMS. Stereolithography, SLA, and selective laser sintering, SLS, are two technologies with expired patents. And so when at an industrial level or at a more serious level, we're looking at different technologies, those will be the most available, most likely will be the most affordable as a result. So we're going to specifically talk about the level of details possible, the colors, textures, support, and cost. Let's start with the details. So the details for those different parts, as we can clearly see, we have more details using stereolithography. And this is something that stereolithography excels at. So if you're looking for more details, you can look at stereolithography. This is not to say that the level of details with SLS is not good. The level of details we get there is also very good and should be enough for most people and most applications. Now let's move into colors. So with SLS, we are restricted to two different colors. Your parts will either be white or black. At least this is the case for the moment. With SLA, however, we can get a lot of different parts and also a lot of different properties. So here we have a part that is more like a page color and we also have a transparent part. Other than those, we can have different colors and also different level of transparencies. This is in addition to different levels of mechanical properties. So we can print with plastics with different hardness. Now let's look at the textures. The texture for our SLS part, and as this is the case for all powder bed technologies, we will have a rough surface finish. So if we take this part here and look at it and start touching it, you can feel that the parts are actually slightly rough. We can smoothen the part if needed by sanding or other smoothing operations. However, for SLS parts, we can have a much smoother surface. So this surface here is actually quite smooth. And here in this transparent part, the surface is actually very smooth, the exact same way you would expect a traditionally manufactured plastic part. Now let's talk about support. With SLS, there is no need for support. And so when we're designing parts for printing with SLS, we don't have to worry about how to orient the part or how to support the part or how to design the part that to such that the support structures can handle or can hold the different parts together. And this makes it easier, for example, to design and print parts like this. So here we have different multiple parts inside each other. And because there is no support required, we can print many different parts interacting with each other, interlinked inside one another without having to worry about how to support the internal structures. However, for this part, the parts inside are supposed to rotate freely, but because of the rough surfaces, this is not really the case. For SLA, we do require support structures. And so anytime we design a part to be printed with SLA, support structures are something we have to keep in mind, especially if we have interlinked geometries within our part. Now, lastly, we can talk about the cost. Generally talking, SLA will be more affordable compared to SLS because uh, the machines are cheaper to start with, but also a lot of it could be related to the workforce required to operate and finish the SLA printed parts. Because with SLS, it will require more effort and more cleaning to end up with your finished part. And most of those are done manually, making the cost here a little bit higher. So now to end up with, we're going to talk about this other part, which is made out of metal. 
Now this metal printing part uses the same process as SLS. It is a powder bed technology and it's referred to as DLMS. And with that, we expect to see a lot of similar advantages and disadvantages with SLS. So for example, the surfaces are quite rough for this metal part. This part is specifically made out of aluminum alloy, by the way. The surfaces are very rough. One thing that is different in the LMS compared to SLS is in this metal powder bed printing, we do require support structures. And so when you are designing a part, you need to keep in mind how the support structures will be interacting with the printed part. This is in terms of the support structures holding the actual part. And also in terms of being able to remove the support structures after the printing. For example, in this particular print, we did have support structures formed. However, the structure itself was so delicate that we were not able to remove the support structures from inside. And so this particular part have the support structures inside of it still, because if we try to remove them, most likely we will break the part. So that's something we have to keep in mind when dealing with this type of metal 3D printing. However, the major advantage is that with metal, we can make geometries that are otherwise impossible to make with other traditional means. And this part we have here is an example of that. If you are to make this part with traditional manufacturing means, subtractive means that is, like CNC or milling, it will be just about impossible to make, but that's not the case with 3D printing. And that's it for our closer look for those different parts.